I am Stefan Mosen. I will talk today about Docker Swarm and with a little demos. Will be more or less a practical talk and some try to understand about some concepts. And okay. So I am a DevOps engineer in Pipedrive. I assist people like Nelson to deploy their code to the live. I came from sysadmin to DevOps engineers, already working bare metal, goes to the virtual machines, and now I'm working in containers. So first some questions, try to understand the public. Who from this room use containers in production? Yeah. Now, who knows what is a container orchestration tool? Right? And who is using that tool in production? Right. So what you would using? Meso, Form, Kubernetes? Kubernetes? Okay. So the first thing, what is Swarm? Swarm, Swarm is the orchestration tool for that came out of the box from, from Docker. So all the things that we think about orchestration for containers, Swarm do, does that. So what you will do, uh, that came from out of the box, that means that pick a lot of whales, that is our dog host in Docker engines, and transform in a single entity. So when you try to contact the, the swarm, it's like just one host of Docker. We have some features that are interesting about swarm. First one, we have integrated cluster management. That's meaning the same CLI you use in your uh, machine, in your development environment, is the same that we'll use in production or in test environment if you're already using Swarm and we already, it's easy to understand what you are doing. The other thing that's typical of, of uh, these kind of tools, you have ability to scale up, scale down your service. Also, we have a uh, management that uh, understand the state of your application or service and try to reconcile that to make, if something breaks, try to uh, make in state you want to. Also, we have load balancing. That's meaning uh, we have a mechanism that allow first to, if you want to ingress balancing, that's meaning you can contact any host and that the host uh, will redirect the, your HTTP request to the correct container. And also we have the internal balance, that's meaning when a service tried to uh, found other service, can uh, do it without, uh, without needing the, of no specific IP. So we have also uh, the mechanism to roll in updates because we not we want to roll updates, and service discovery. It's more or less the same thing as I told about load balance. Just we need we don't need to uh, be uh, worry and try to understand how to find our service. Swarm will provide the mechanism to do that. So that was the features. The some concepts will be first one, the nodes. So node will be any instance or server or machine that have a Docker engine. Then we have two different types of nodes. We have manager that manage all the cluster. Then we have the worker. The main purpose of the worker is to execute the workloads of your service. It's more or less best practice to separate the things. Manager will should not should only do manager stuff and serve workers will provide will uh, will try to work with the service that you want to, to leave to your customers. Don't the by default you can if you can do have a manager doing the having workloads, but we don't want to do that in production. So we also we have service and the tasks. The service is really uh, all, something that you try to, to provide to, the, to your customer, your microservice, for example. It's your serv uh, microservice. And the task is really the entity that will control. Uh, we have the connection with the container and try to understand what happened with, with the container. Normally, with what we have, we have a service that represents all the stuff and then the task will, will be the replicas which we have. Uh, more or less in corporations, 
normally the one thing that is different from Kubernetes, for example, the task peer and storm only allows one container. The pods that more or less the equivalent will support uh, more uh, containers. Then we have the other thing that is secrets and configuration. That's the mechanism that Swarm provides you to store sensitive data. That data, for example, will store inside of the managers and will be transmitted to the service if we assign that secret to the service. And all that transmission is encrypted by TLS. Then config is the same thing that's uh, secrets, but it's open uh, plain text. So you can uh, see inside of the swarm uh, what is the config, but it's secret. It's already encrypted. You don't know what is. Then we have the volumes. That's the only the wicked point at the moment from swarm. Swarm don't support natively uh, persistent volumes. That's meaning. If you have, you can have a volume uh, in one dedicated uh, node, but you need to constrain the service to work on that node. But we have plugins that allow us, for example, to do attachment from uh, AWS volume to the, to the swarm, and then that volume can be accessible in all the swarm. But that is a work in progress, and the team that is working uh, developing the swarm is already a uh, thing to do something about that in during the current year or the next year to support container um, source, uh, container volumes uh, interface, I think that is the, vol the right name. Then we have networks. So I was already talk the mesh. The mesh in this case is a way of uh, really, you don't need to know the, the IP of the host, the, the where the container is running, you need just to know one of the IPs. So Swarm will do that, that will, uh, well, Swarm will do the routing for you. It's a, this is an example. If you want to have a cluster already public for internet, you just need to reach one of the IPs and we have everything okay. If you want to use a load balance to protect your cluster, just configure your load balance to route to any IP of the, the cluster. Then we have some magic. In the overlay uh, networks, that meaning uh, when you spin up um, two containers from the same service, what uh, what we can have, uh, we can have a connection in that over, uh, overlay network. That meaning that you don't need to expose the port, the parts to to access the machines. That meaning, for example, if you uh, if you have a service, a web service in the node one and the database in node two, we want to, uh, the service, the web service to be accessed publicly, but database no. So the overlay network allows you to uh, contact the, the web service with database without exposing any, any port, and then the service will reach database normally. So how to use Swarm? The first thing that is simple, it's create a Swarm. Swarm, Docker Swarm in it, it's the only thing you need to do to create a Swarm. And even the basic uh, thing that if, if you want to test in your home, uh, your, uh, your laptop, for example, if you have already a Docker test, uh, desktop, you can have Swarm or just one node. And then if you want to want join workers, you just Docker Swarm uh, join. So I will try now to do demo. And... Uh, Let's see how it's work. Okay, that's my setup. I have uh, one, four, uh, five uh, VMs in the Google Cloud. I define already this one as a Docker manager. So what you have here, Docker, yes, we don't have anything but doc swarm in it ah sorry uh, okay it's okay if you want okay, a bit more so we start the swarm and he's asking me how to join workers so we just grab this one
already. We have two nodes in our throne. Let's check that. Docker node LDS. We have two nodes. So move on again to the presentation uh, or not. Let's share again if you hear. By the way, uh, if you want to play more in, uh, at home, you can use this uh, beautiful app that is play with, play with Docker. That commands run that. At this moment in this demo, I plan to do with these uh, labs, but because the demo of the gods say that today it's offline, I don't know why. So we already understand if you want to take a picture. Okay, let's go. So let's try to first understand how to set up a service. Here is a link of uh, Docker uh, documentation. It's also a great thing that we have uh, with Swarm and Docker that documentation is really great. So it's simple, Docker service create and we really create the service. Let's see, for example, what I will do now is I'm connecting to my Manager, I will create a service. My service will be called my web, and we have two replicas, and we have published to port 88. That's meaning that we are already using the ingress net network and expose the port. Yes, thanks. And now you already have Docker service. PS, LES to see all the services we have. Docker service, PS, my web. And you see the nice thing that is we have um, all the. Um, we have the, the ports, the nodes. That's meaning that this representation is the tasks that are uh, connected with the container. We are responsible to understand the container. One thing at this, this moment, I only have two nodes. So let's join the other node that will be this command. Node. Oh, yes. Yes, you can see one of the difference. Workers cannot understand swarm. You really, you really need to do commands that are swarm related in the manager. Docker node. Oh, yes, we see extra node. So let's try to see if you can access our NGX. So the IP is like this. And port 8080. One thing that you notice at the, I have here the IP of, of the worker tool. And uh, if you remember, the worker tool do, uh, don't have the container. So let's see if, if everything is okay. And again. Even we don't connect to the, the worker that have the container will reach the service. So let's move on to the next part. That is, let's see what you have in the notes. Okay, let's do one freaking thing that is connect scale down service. Simple scale down and 
let's do another thing. So let's see, one thing I would like to show you and see if this script is working properly. This script will do a curl and we will have a request. So let's try upgrade our version. What happens? We do update to our image. We change the version and we start to have some issues. You notice zero zero. We start to have a, a downtime. We don't we don't want this in our service, right? So what do you need to do? We need to scale. We scale three, for example, and we have everything running in the whole service. Let's check again. are changing already the image, changing one for run running, changing for the second runner. And finish. Just taking care that everything is okay. And you don't see any downtime, I think. So great. When scales, we will have a, a um, updates of the image without any problem. And then we have some more things to do. And this is, for example, a compose file with all this configuration. It's a mess. It's complicated to understand that. So for that reason, I will show first again part of the theory about the Docker uh, compose file. So the first thing we need to, to define our service is the resource. So um, here, if, uh, it's a good practice to try to set limits in reservations. In the reservation, it's uh, what your application, your container can access and, and the first uh, a lot at the beginning. And then in the limit, it's the max. So if your applications uh, ultrapass the max, the max you have, Docker Swarm will kill it. So also, we have the deploy. That big part will define all the all the configuration we want to do to have in the in the deploy. Then we have the restart policy. That's meaning how we want to restart the service if if that service uh, it's killed or have any failure. We set the conditions. We set delays. Then we have the update config. That's meaning. Remember, you want to update our service. You we need to change the, the Docker image. So how we want to change? For example, we have number of replicas, but we have the parallelism. That's meaning, for example, if we have four or five um, replicas, you can decide to do parallelism of two. That's meaning that we only update two of two. Then we have the delay between this parallelism, and then we have the order. That's meaning by default, Swarm will do stop first. That's meaning we'll kill the old container and then start a new one. But you can do the inverse. So you start the new one and then kill. And then we're really, if you have a threshold of number of replicas, you can avoid with that. Then we have the callback config because nothing gets perfect and something it's failed. Um, we can set or define Swarm to decide how to do when the, that update failed. For example, imagine that the first uh, container that was doing the update, it's failed. When this configuration, they can revert the, for the previous image or the previous state. Then we have the L check. I think one thing that is, these L checks are important uh, to understand is if the service is healthy, but that's depend of business logic of the healthy of the, our service. Try to understand that uh, 
only use a well checks that's uh, meaning that if you restart the service everything will be okay for example imagine that uh, uh, your uh, L check is uh, trying to understand if the service have connect to database and the database is down it's not because you're restarting the, the, the service that we have a more uh, the connection to database then we have the magic of the secrets here we really assign a secret to a service. We first get the service in the secret in Swarm, and then we can expose to, to the service so they can access that. Configuration, same thing, but plain text. Then we have volumes. Here we define how we want to have persistent data in our container. It's more or less the same thing that probably we have already in Docker Compose, the normal ones, but here we can ex also find the external ones. So, for example, if you're using X-ray plugin, you have uh, then uh, volume in Swarm, then you just define down there external uh, volume. Then uh, networks. Imagine you are picky to, to define your network, in this case, the overlay networks. You will define privilege with all the configuration you want, and then you can already uh, assign that, that network to your service. Because uh, Swarm, if you don't define, for example, the volume or the, or the service, it will create by itself. So you don't break everything, or it's just to be more easy to, to start your, your service. So let's try to create to deploy a service. That's the other part that is different. Docker service command don't uh, allow you to use um, uh, Docker Compose as a font of um, configuration. So you need to use a stack. Stack is more or less the concept of um, having several service in one unit, and then you can define that unit. So here. It's, let's try to. So in our case, we define the image NGX. This is the port that automatically uh, create, uh, attach that service to the ingress network. Uh, it's closing the port to 8080. The number of replicas we define here, our limitations, our reservations, how I want to update my configuration, how I want to roll back my, my, my configuration and policy. And it is, for example, one of the examples I found to, okay, you are not, what happened here, sorry. Okay. A little bit slow, okay. We found here also the um, health check, it's command to that's run inside of container and then we can see how is the service it's up. And then another thing. Much. So let's I have a delay here. Let's first remove our service that we already have. Okay, so Docker service alias, we don't have anything. Then let's do one thing. So, oh. Save. Okay. Docker stack. Deploy minus C. 
number of files, Docker Compose, and we need to give a name for, the, for our stack to be demo. As you see, they are already creating a network for us. This screen now, but more clear. Here we can see that we already have the service. Docker stack. PS demo. And we see the stacks. Remember, we put replica tree and have everything okay. So, and probably if everything is okay, so we have NGX working. Ray. So, Let's try to find some tips first. As I would say, uh, deploy, please don't deploy workloads, that's meaning service and stacks in managed nodes, because if that guys are coordinating the, the, your swarm, please don't put work that's not necessary for them. So you are stealing CPU and memory and stuff probably you don't want to, to use it. Don't restart a container in swarm, that's meaning please stop the container because if you restart the container, the swarm will try again to, to create a new one. So it's more pleasant to stop and then, um, it's, no, not restart, it's just stop because the swarm will, will, will uh, handle that and, and create a new one. And uh, try to not provision your cluster in full cap capacity. That's meaning you need to reserve, reserve some space in terms of CPU and memory in the cluster. Because if one of the workers gets down, Swarm will try to, to put the, all the services that were already in, running that worker in the other workers. And then you boom, you just uh, screw up the, the cluster. Things to do, using a, an even number of managers, that's meaning, because of half uh, protocol, that is the protocol that it's used to communicate between managers, when uneven number works properly. It's more or less a bug, but try to, to, to use that so you can you avoid that, that issue. Set reservation, of li uh, uh, reservation and limits for service, because you can have a rogue service that start consume all the RAM of your service. With this, we will not fix that issue, but we will prevent to, 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 to have damage in the other, uh, another service. And use smart health checks, because if you have a smart uh, health check that's not so smart, we have a, a issue of restarting the service unnecessary. And first, I will also like to do another, another demo that is to explain the, um, the other thing we, we talk about, because we didn't talk about secrets and configuration. So what I have here, I have here a service that has a front end, or more or less front end, and a database. And one thing that I want to show you, that is, okay, we have the secrets, the config, so I don't need to do anything. And I will show you the part of the Docker Enterprise Edition. So I have a bundle to connect my UCP. This moment, my terminal is already connected to my, to my UCP. And what I will do, Docker LES, so you have a lot of servers <laughs> waiting for me. So the first thing I will want to do is create a service. Uh, create, not, sorry, a secret. So I will do, Mm, but sorry. Docker secret. Uh, 
create and I will define my service, my secret as Mongo root and I use data I have in my computer. That's the thing. Because I already add secret with that name. Let's remove it. So Docker secret remove photo. create again. Great. So this is more or less the identifier of the um, secret. So secret inspect. Ah, damn it. No. Oh, you can use it. Let's see. Yes. So what you have here, you have more or less the IDs and the hash but you don't have anything about the secret. Then we need to create the configuration, but probably big LES. Already there, so I will not create again. So, but the configuration is more or less a JSON file that I, it's necessary for my service to find the port, find the, the, all the data that he needs, and find the configuration for a success database. So instead of uh, expose that uh, in, the, um, in the environment variables for the service, we can have this configuration in, in my cluster in production. I have the same name in test and just roll out, and we will just use that configuration. And because I think we have everything set, set well, so we have now Docker start. One minute. Demo and again demo. Okay, so let's try to find if everything is okay. So. Docker stack. That's demo. So we have the ID of the task. We have here the ID of the task of of my my container and what we'll do. Docker inspect task ID and I will just use this template to find the container ID that is associated to that task. Come on. Okay. Now I can get in inside of service. Log service. It's like this. And ta -da. So my service it's connecting to database. It's already uh, waiting for the port 300. And as uh, you can see, MongoDB server on DevOps service are using the same secret. So the password I define my, to my database, it's already known to my service. And as you can see, I didn't specify the port. So remember that thing about net network overlay? because they are connected inside of one network overlay that will be at this, this one, at the uh, network demo default, the both containers can reach each other without uh, need of exposing ports. Um, and pretty well is that. Other uh, thing, I didn't define anything about the volume outside of my system and it's using this num name for the volume. So I will see in the Docker volumes, most probably my 
Sí, inspect. Oh. Ahí voy. Yeah, it's here. So that's meaning when I try to do the to the Docker volume um, that attached to the system that was running and was not um, not really in that string that I was trying to do. So he attached the name of the host. One thing also I tried to show you. Let's see. That probably missed was is Docker stack. Yes, demo. Do you notice? So we have the case I show in the diagram. You have a node, our de a DevOps uh, application is one node, the MongoDB is the other node, seamless, uh, go there. So what happens here in the magic is that we have, for example, the, the um, servers connected by layer three, the Docker overlay though does a layer two connection, tunnel, by, uh, like a Viper, uh, virtual network using TLS to encrypt everything to unite these two containers. So you don't need to be uh, really um, thinking, hey, maybe I need to put in the other holes because they are connected. Really, you don't care. If the holes are connected itself inside of the swarm, Docker will do stuff for you. Uh, so probably move you on. So why to use Docker Swarm? The first thing is simple to create swarms. And as you see, two steps and now create a swarm. So then the other thing that is it's low, it lower the learning curve. curve. So, so that's meaning that we have the developers working in, in Docker in their machines. They're using already Docker Compose to set up all the environment they want. Why they need to learn a different language, a different command line to work in production with a different uh, orchestrator. So every CLI, every command CLI, it's working. Every concept that we already have in Docker Compose to work in our machines, it's already the same in, in production. So we don't have a gap of knowledge. And then the other thing is, it's already a good orchestration tool. So they provide everything you expect for orchestration tool. And the plus that we have security features built in. And one thing I just missed to show you is the interface that came from Docker Enterprise. Uh, this is the CPU that's more or less what our developers use to identify the, the, um, the service they have. So just to make sure that I was not fooling you, we have here, our demo. So the stack I deploy in command line, it's here. And you see, you can see everything here. And let's try to see one thing that is, for example, the secrets I was created. And you don't have any password here. So it's really encrypted and don't have anything. Okay. So, First, then I need to thank you. Trueno is our uh, senior DevOps engineers and is our lovely uh, Docker captain. He was the guy that helped me to really check out every details I mean, and things that I don't want to give you false information. So my presentation was more or less scripted, was inspected by him, so they have everything properly set. And guys, swarm up. Thank you.